I'm ready. How about you? For what? Dinner, silly. Remember, Grant, Celia? It's a bit early, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I suppose it is. Well, not to worry. We'll get there early and have a little drink. We can't. One little drink never hurt anybody. Grant and Celia are meeting somebody there. If we show up too early, it'll be awkward. Then we'll have a belt right here. Good idea. Have yourself a seat. I, uh, <clears throat> keep this here for medicinal purposes, of course. Of course. It will be neat. Well, I don't mind it even if it's sloppy. Ha, ha. That's at least your worst joke for the year. Oh, well. My dancing is something to behold. Here's to the demise of Hannibal. But not to the demise of my career. We'll see. You keep saying that. You keep needing reminders. Aren't you proud of me, Robert? Is that why you did it? No, I did it for the excitement, but it would be nice if you could say that you were proud of me. You did very well for yourself, love. Does that surprise you? Not at all. Then why don't I get even a sense, a, a hint of enthusiasm? Maybe I'm not enthusiastic. I feel like a child being reprimanded. No. I am speaking to you as your husband. It's more than a reprimand. You're not going to forbid me to do it again, are you? You think I would? Robert, why? I don't understand you. Why? Look, it's really very simple. You are not a con artist. You're my wife. All right? And I'm the police commissioner. And I'm not going to have you mixing with con artists as the con, even if you are on the right side of the law. It's in my blood, Robert. Adventure, excitement, taking risks, following them through to the bitter end. I've been keeping it in check up until now, but now that I've had another taste of it, well, it makes me think that I can't live without it. If you take it away from me, I don't know what'll be left. I'll be left. Our life together. The children we'll one day have. Well, I want you, and I want our life together, and I want the children. That doesn't mean to say I can't have something to myself, does it? Find something. But what? I don't know. That's up to you. You know where I stand. Yes, well, you certainly made that clear enough. Damn, it was fun while it lasted. Here they are right now. Ah. You're right on time. Well, we waited in the car for five minutes to make sure that you were through with your meeting. Ah. For which uh, you obviously are because you're alone. <laughs> the night is ours. Thank you. I'm serious. It's called the designated driver. Oh. So what do they do? Draw a lot? I suppose it's uh, up to the group, but anyway, one person is picked as the driver, and then everybody else can drink as much as they like. Well, that's not much fun for the driver. It's not bad for everybody else's peace of mind, though. Well, yeah. who is our designated driver tonight? Hmm? Well, um, I believe we had uh, we have two cars. Oh, oh, that's a problem. Two drivers. The girls. Hey. Well, that sounds good to me. I mean, they never drink as much as we do anyway. Hey. Excuse me, Mr. Andrews. Yes. A message was left for you a few minutes ago, and it's just come to my attention. And what was that? From a Dr. Campbell. He regrets he won't be able to keep your appointment. Really? But did he give a reason? I believe he said he was called out of town. You, we were not trying to cover anything up. And you weren't volunteering too Thank much you. either. Rude of us, possibly, but we decided not to mention the subject tonight. Uh, putting the real Grant Putnam behind us has not been easy. Uh, this Dr. Campbell wanted to talk to you about Putnam? <laughs> what else? Does anyone know why Campbell was in town in the first place? Yes, he wanted to write a book about some of his patients. Yeah, we both just wish that they'd all leave us alone. Can't blame you. I wonder why he stayed so long in Fort Charles. Who, Dr. Campbell? No, the other grunt. It must be damned uncomfortable for him here. Mm, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Sounds to me like you're trying to recapture something. The question is what? Past, the years he's lost. Oh, how can he expect to do that, Robert? Look, things happen in life, good and bad, and only a romantic tries to change reality. If there's one thing I have learned through all this, it's that you can't turn back the clock. Maybe he's trying to find himself after losing his identity mm. for all those years. It must be horrible. Well, I don't want you to think I don't have any empathy for the man. I do. There's just nothing I can do about it. Well, nobody expects you to. He does. He wants something. It makes it so difficult. All we want is to go on and lead a normal life. Yes, and we could, if he would just go away and leave us alone. You angry? Yeah, I'm angry. I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm guilty. But I can handle it now. What do you mean? I mean, we're two men in the same boat. Both of us are victims of circumstance. Two men with a common background and 
possibly a common future. It's a fascinating way of looking at it. Well, it's the only way of looking at it, Holly. If you want to keep your sanity. To answer your question, no. We did consider it, but we decided against it. Moving away would have been running away. We couldn't do it. Mm. Besides, how were we to know that this man was going to stay here in Port Charles? And had you known? We would have done the same thing. This town has become too much of a home to us for us to just up and leave. Change our names, that's one thing, but change our entire lives, no. As a couple of your closest friends, may I add, we're glad you didn't. In that same vein, there's something that I would like to say. I realize that by dining with me tonight, you are exposing yourselves to a certain amount of political risk, and I am sorry for that, but I am also very appreciative of this gesture. Look, it's not gesture. We wanted to have dinner with you. And we're not political types. No. In other words, to hell with what people think. Let's just have a good time. Okay. I thought we were. Well, I'll tell you what, if we'll stop talking about Mr. Putnam, I'll have a wonderful time. End of discussion. Okay, let's talk about you two now. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that is a boring subject. Oh, I don't believe that for a minute. It's been a long time since we've had an evening out, and I'm sure something exciting has happened in your lives. Well, Holly did have a little adventure. Oh, it was a very minor one. I wouldn't want to bore you. Just a minute. The word it. adventure conjures up all kinds of images. No, well, actually, it was more police work. Um, it was, it was this man came to town with a fantastic scam to rip off young women with dreams of stardom. It was a simple con, but he was a pretty tricky customer. To cut a long story short, Polly risked life and limb to get this guy to be exposed to the world. Well, Robert, I'm surprised you let her do it. I didn't have much choice. I mean, I offered my help, but all I got back was a resounding no. Well, all that police red tape would have just got in the way. I preferred to take care of it in my own subtle fashion. Look at us. What a group. A former con woman turns crime buster. A former WSB agent turns police bigwig. A former spy turns med student. And me, a former heiress turns interior decorator. <laughs> and I actually enjoy working nine to five. Who says people never change? Here's to change. Mm -hmm. Just and goes to show you. To the friendships that we make along the way. All right. Friendship knows no boundaries. <laughs> I will drink to that. I'll join you. Cheers. Cheers. To old friends and new futures. May they not get in the way of each other. Not a chance. sat here quite patiently through this entire meal, not once mentioning the scam you broke. Thank you. Now, I can't take it anymore. Details. Well, it all started with an ad in the newspaper for dance lessons. They guaranteed a Broadway audition. Right from the beginning, I sensed the scam. So, she enrolls. It's that they said ten dance lessons, but then they cut it down to eight, and then six. But for the price of ten, of course. And within a week, was asking more money. Needless to say, the Broadway audition was as fake as the rest of it. Which is why my friend, the dance teacher, will be spending the next few years in jail. Good. <laughs> What's the smell down? Uh, well, you look at that. Wonder where he met her? Yes, I wonder. <clears throat> I can't believe it. I look for you all day and where do I find you? I least expect it. <laughs> Well, obviously, just a coincidence. Well, aren't you going to introduce us, Jimmy Lee? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Lorena Sharp of Avalon Spas. Hello? Just visiting, Miss Sharp? Some business. How long I'll be here will depend on how that business turns out. Oh, I see. Um, Holly Scorpio. Glad to meet you. And that handsome gentleman next to her is Police Commissioner Robert Scorpio. Told you so. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Sharp? How do you do, Commissioner? And this is Grant Andrews? Hi. My pleasure, Miss Sharp. And this must be Celia. Yes, that's right. How did you know? Well, actually, it was very easy. Jimmy Lee has talked of little else all evening. I'm so glad we had this chance to meet Celia. I mean, if you can do for Avalon Spas what you did for the Quartermaid's East Wing, we're going to get along fabulously. Well, we're all going to get along just fine. <laughs> That's us. One big happy family. I'll remember that. Well, uh, I think our table is ready, Lorena. You ready? Yes, I'm sure you have a lot of business to discuss. Yeah, among other things. It was nice meeting all of you. I'm sure I'll be seeing you again soon. We look forward to it. It's 
rescue this? Thought they'd never leave. Well, are you uncomfortable, darling? He was showing her off like a new car. Oh, you can't blame him. I mean, she's, she's very attractive. Not that attractive. Oh, she's attractive enough. Looks like she may be your new boss. Well, I'd say she's thinking about it, but she has definitely not decided. Perhaps Monica will put in a good word for you. Was this Grant you're actually anxious for me to work for Jimmy Lee now? Who said anything about working for Jimmy Lee? He'll be working for Lorena, and as she said, I suspect you two will get along fabulously. You really think so? Oh, could be just what you need, darling. Could be just what all three of you need. Well, looks like Lorena made a good impression on Grant. <laughs> Not just on Grant. What do you mean? Take a look for yourself. Well, good night. Good night, Commissioner. Given. Except maybe one to mum when I was but a wee lad. Anyway, until you, there'd never been anyone that special. I love you, Holly. Not the kind of love that only lasts a day or a month or a year. Not the kind that lasts a lifetime either. Ours is a love that will live forever. No two souls have been more right for each other. More perfect, more blessed. It's beautiful. Well, you are beautiful. I was going to give this to you last night, but I thought now would be better. Oh, love. Shouldn't have. Really shouldn't have. Yeah, we got here. You are my knight in shining armor. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, uh... <laughs> it, it, um... It sort of leaps out at you, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you like it? I love it. Matter of fact, I'm going to wear it to work and every day after that. Well, you don't have to. I want to. Thank you. It's beautiful. You go back to bed now. Well, I kind of had this idea about uh, having a sauna. Well, that's too bad. I had my heart set on a bubble bath. Hmm. I'll tell you what. We'll go back to bed, then we'll have a sauna, and then we'll jump into the bubble bath. Sounds wicked. I just knew you'd love it. Come on. Oh, I thought I heard you, Carl. This is the most perfect time. Mm. I had to get out of that place. They were going to drive me crazy in there. I'd ask if you had a tough day, but I you know, think it's incredible. I already know. Why can't criminals work the same way as normal people and take a day off every now and again? Well, of course, if your case load is too big. No, 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 I'm not asking for any help. All right, then, we'll play, just the two of us. How does a nice long walk sound? Considering that the forecast says snow, I think it's a bad idea. Well, we'll stay in, then. Well, I got work to do on the computer. Uh, how about poker? We could stay and play poker, maybe even better, strip poker. How does that sound? Holly, love, I've got work to do. That's the reason I came home. I want to play with the computer. Oh. I'll get it. Hello? Yeah, uh, yes, he's right here. Mr. Armistead? Mrs. Scorpio. I'm glad I caught you, Commissioner. The strangest thing has happened, and I'm not sure what to do about it. At first, my reaction was to forget it. But now I'm not so sure. Well, perhaps if you explain the situation. Oh, of course. Uh, it concerns Dr. Campbell. What about it? 
Well, this may sound strange to you, but I'm beginning to think he's disappeared. I just got another call from Dr. Tremaine in London. The head of Putnam Sanitarium? Yes, he's been trying to track down Dr. Campbell for several days now, and he hasn't had any luck. He's tried all of Campbell's colleagues in this country. Well, why the alarm? Well, apparently psychiatrists always keep in touch, like physicians, you know? Well, maybe Campbell's having himself a high old time in New York. Well, Tremaine seems to think that Campbell's unavailability is highly irregular. And I guess it's not for me to take this lightly. Oh, are you? I'd be tempted. Well, I wouldn't if I were you. I mean, Campbell's due back and Tremaine's highly concerned. And I'm passing this on to you for what it's worth. What is all your interest in this, Mr. Armistead? Well, there was something in Tremaine's voice. He uh, sounded, well, as if he were expecting bad news of some sort. London's a long way away. Maybe it was the connection. Well, I know his voice, Commissioner. The man is alarmed. All right. Well, I'll look into it. If Campbell took any form of public transportation, I should be able to track it. You can reach me here if you find anything. I'm at my office. All right. Give me an hour or two and I'll get back to you. Thank you, Commissioner. Don't mention it. Did you pick up on any of that? Enough to know that someone is missing. Dr. Hilary Campbell, Grant Putnam's psychiatrist. How missing is missing? Well, enough to worry his boss back in London. I think I better give Putnam a call. If Campbell told anybody anything, it would have been him. He's uh, at the Port Charles Hotel, isn't he? I believe so. I guess this means that the rest of your afternoon is going to be tied up. Looks that way. What I would give just to have one afternoon alone with you. Hello? Yes, I'd like to speak to Grant Putnam, please. Uh, please have a seat. I won't keep you too long. Uh, you mentioned on the phone something about research. Yes, uh, for my med school entrance exams. <laughs> I've got an awful lot of catching up to do. Mm, I can imagine. Robert and I were just saying the other day how interesting it is that yours and, and Grant Andrews' lives are, are moving along in a parallel fashion. There's one big difference. He'll be finishing his education and I'm just starting mine. Yes, he had all those years in England, didn't he? We both did, Mr. Scorpion. Now tell me, is this why you called me over here to discuss the other grant? No, no, it's another matter altogether. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get us some coffee. Thanks, love. She's welcome, Mr. Well, I felt that you, uh, you may have been more comfortable. I, uh, I had a call from your friend, Mr. Armistead, from New York. He'd been contacted by Dr. Tremaine, um, regarding the whereabouts of Dr. Campbell. Yes, Henry called me also. All I could tell him was that, uh, Dr. Campbell had left for New York. When? A couple or three days ago. Have you heard from him since? Not a word. I see. Well, do you find that strange in any way? Maybe out of the ordinary? Not really. He's working on a book, and I assume he just needed a few moments of privacy. You do know, I assume, that I'm going to be one of his important chapters in that book. No, I didn't. Hmm. <laughs> we had some rather lengthy discussions on it. So you'll be expecting to hear from him again? Yeah, I'm sure I will. If not during the editing process, then uh, sometime afterwards. He promised that he would autograph a copy for me. I see. Maybe you'll be in for a cut of the profits. I mean, as you're one of the main reasons, we'll sell the book. <laughs> no, no spotlight for me. Thank you very much. Anything that Dr. Campbell makes off the book, I owe him. If it weren't for that man, I'd still be number 402 back at Rockmore. Anyone interested in coffee? Oh, thank you very much. I, uh, I'd better pass. <laughs> I've got those books waiting for me. Well, that's quite all right. Uh, we'll be in touch. And good luck on your exams. Thank you very much, sir. Mrs. Scorpio, a pleasure. Thank you. <sighs> Did you catch any of that dialogue between Putnam and me? I couldn't help it. It's... Not difficult from the kitchen. So what do you think? I mean, is it possible for a man like Campbell to just evaporate into thin air? As a matter of fact, I haven't thought about it. Really? I thought your overactive little imagination would be going crazy at the thought of another mystery, which is 
what could be the case here. I know. But this time it was different. I couldn't get past being spooked by that man's incredible resemblance to our grant. You've already confirmed that he's taking the plane from Port Charles to New York. What are you doing now? Seeing if he's on any outgoing manifests. To London, for instance. Doesn't show. Not London, or anywhere else for that matter. You sure? Not by aeroplane. But that still leaves buses and trains. Yeah. Doesn't fit. I mean, you take a flight somewhere, you get off the plane and you stay, you get back on it again and you come back. So you think he's still in New York? That's my guess. Well, it's a big city. If he wanted to get lost there, he could. Question is, why would he? Not knowing him, I have no idea. I mean, I can understand somebody going to New York. I mean, business, a thousand other reasons. But you're wondering why he hasn't called anybody. I'm wondering why everyone is so concerned about him. Well, what are you going to do? If you call the NYPD, they'll just laugh at you. Not Ellingsby. Who's he? He's a buddy of mine from the WSB. Works for uh, the NYPD now. Has done for about a year. Tom Ellingsby, please. Robert Scorpio. Must be nice having friends in all the right places. Comes in very handy. Tom? Yes, Scorpio. Yeah, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Listen, mate, this won't, uh, this won't take a second. I've got a problem here. I'm trying to trace someone. A guy called uh, uh, Dr. Hillary Campbell. Left New York a couple of days ago and no one's heard anything. Yeah. Thank you. He's going to run up through the computer. They have computers, you know. She hopes so. He's doing a, just a general routine on the name. Uh, what? Of course I'm here. <laughs> Don't brag. I know it was quick. No kidding. Yeah. What about a follow-up? Nothing, eh? I c yeah, I'd appreciate that. Thanks, Tom. Well? They got a panic call from a Dr. Hillary Campbell at the airport. Said he was being mugged. When they got there, the phone was off the hook. Campbell was missing. Foul play, huh? Looks that way. What are you going to do? Only thing I can do, pursue it. Can I help? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Give me some more coffee. That's it? Mm. A little easier on the cream. You're welcome. I know, I should have called first. No, we use the excuse I always use. You were in the neighborhood. I'm bored and I don't like it. So I came over here for a little excitement. Would you believe it? All the excitement I've been through in the last year and the first slow day comes along, I'm ready to scream. Interesting coincidence. I'm having the same kind of day myself. We'll mourn together. Are things really that bad? No, actually they're not. Grant has just passed his first pre-med exam. He's got a date for his second. He has to take them one at a time. It doesn't seem to bother him at all. But how about you? Well, I'm preparing a folder to show Lorena Sharp of Avalon Spas. I'm shooting for a position as design consultant, but to tell you the truth, I take pool man. Listen to you, as if they'd be dumb enough to pass you up. You never know with designing. It's so completely arbitrary. One day you're somebody, and the next day you're sweeping floors. Well, at least you have a career. Yeah. Don't you want one? To tell you the truth, it is not the life I envision for myself. I like it. I do, I enjoy it, but when I think of what could have been, a doctor's wife? No, even before that, the adventure, the nightlife, jetting off to the Bahamas. You know, I think it's that time of year. Yes, I certainly won't argue with you. That was a very nice way of living. You sound like a spoiled brat. 
Well, if it'll make you feel any better, I miss those things myself. Don't get me wrong. I am not putting down Port Charles. I think it's a very sweet, charming place. It's just not New York. Not even close. I know exactly how you feel. It's like... It's like going back to an amusement park over and over again. After a while, the thrill is gone and you wonder what you're doing now. <laughs> you know, maybe I think that you should start thinking about getting a job, too. Oh, I think about it all the time. Well, so what's keeping you, then? I don't know what I want to do. Well, what about the spas? What about it? I'm sure there are going to be plenty of jobs available. Well, I'll, I'll think about it. Meanwhile, we're stuck with another evening with nothing to do. No, you're stuck. I've got to go back to Kelly's. <laughs> Kelly's and meet Grant. Ooh, that reminds me. The other Grant was here today. I know, I saw him at Kelly's. Did he mention Dr. Campbell? Briefly. He seems concerned along with everyone else. I'm sure Robert will track him down. Holly, tell me something. What do you think of Grant? Grant Putnam? Mm-hmm. He was friendly, charming. He certainly wasn't what I expected. Why? I just wanted to make sure it wasn't me. If you find yourself attracted to him, it's only natural. No. Attracted to, no. Curious about, perhaps. Be careful. Oh, Holly, don't be ridiculous. Oh, I've got to go. Celia. What? I meant what I said. Be careful. You worry too much. I'll see you at the spa, huh? Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. You keep me posted? <laughs> Good man. Yeah, we'll get together soon. Talk then. Bye-bye. This is good. This is the closest I've come to winning this evening. I may have commenced a winning streak myself. You've got something? That was my cop mate in the front. They've just pulled in this uh, vagrant pickpocket. Guess what he had on him? A little watch. Engraved on the inside to Dr. Hilary Campbell. I'd call that a pretty substantial lead. It looks that way, doesn't it? Well, what are you going to do? Head off to the Big Apple Monday morning. I want to be there when I question this vagrant. What about me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, red seven under the black. Commissioner Scorpio. That's right. And you are? Detective James. And you're in charge of the Campbell investigation. That I am. What can I do for you, Commissioner? I'd like to fly down to New York City this morning and talk to the man that you picked up with Campbell's watch. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there'd be no problem. Uh, any relevant information for us? No, but I do have an interest in Campbell's itinerary. He started out his travels here in my jurisdiction. Now, I'm in touch with his London superior. And there's a lot of concern at that end. Well, not much you can tell him at this point. No sign of Campbell yet? Or not a no. trace. Not a trace. If the man was looking to disappear, he's done a pretty fair job of it so far. I just want to make sure that it was his idea. Is it that good, or are you just in a hurry to get to New York? Both. When do you leave? This morning. How long will you be? As long as it takes to question this derelict about what he was doing with Campbell's watch. That's all you've got to go on? It's their only clue. The guy claims to know nothing about it. I just want to find out for myself. If all this happened whilst Dr. Campbell was in the airport, and since he was traveling, did anyone think to look for his luggage? Well, nothing's turned up so far. Curious. A little too mysterious for my liking. Maybe he just decided to go off on holiday, you know, skiing or something. And left his watch with some bum for safekeeping? Maybe he lost it. 
What have we got here? I mean, are you trying to talk me out of this case? Whatever happened to the... the super sleuth? Scours the dailies looking for illicit criminal activity in the classifieds. It's just testing you. How am I doing? Well, I'll give you your grades later on once you've decided what happened, if anything did happen, to Dr. Campbell. Yeah, well, that's why I'm catching the shuttle to New York. I want to find out what this guy was doing with Campbell's watch. Anyway, I'm off. You take care. I knew where to fly. Look, I'll call you later. I'll be home uh, later on this afternoon. What's on your docket for the day, anyway? Exciting stuff. Lunch with Celia at the floating rib. Give her my best. Oh, uh, Roderick? Yeah? What exactly do you think happened to Dr. Campbell? I don't know. That's what I hope to find out in New York. Two for lunch? Yes, please. This way, please. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you. I wonder what she's doing here. Nothing for us to wonder about. I suppose not. Forget her. So, it's just the two of us, wives on the loose. As usual. Mm -hmm. Grant's at work, Robert's in New York, and so here we are, lunching alone. Are you complaining? No, 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 I'm just commenting. Do you ever think that maybe we should start families? I mean, having little ones all over the place might keep us occupied. You've been talking to Robert, haven't you? He put you up to this, right? What do you mean? He's been after me to have a baby. And you're saying no? I'm saying I would love to. Eventually. And he doesn't want to wait, right? I think he just wants to get me out of his hair. Oh, no, I doubt that. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's not that I don't want to have children, because I really do. It's just that that's not all I want to do with my life. I know exactly what you mean. But for Grant and I right now, there's absolutely no choice. I did want to have children before, before this nightmare descended upon us. But now that our situation has changed so drastically, it's out of the question. For the time being, though, not forever. For the foreseeable future. Grant and I are having a hard time affording to take care of ourselves, much less children. I know it must be really difficult for you and Grant. It is. It is, Holly. Living this way. <laughs> but we have each other. Unfortunately, that's all we have. Do you miss the old days? Oh, all the time. You? More and more. You know, I was listening to Robert this morning. He was telling me about Dr. Campbell's disappearance. And as I was listening to him, I could... I was getting more and more interested in what he was saying. I couldn't wait to get involved. Shades of the dance scam, eh? Not a chance. It was me who discovered Hannibal Operation. So Robert was more or less stuck with me. But he's not going to let me anywhere near the Campbell investigation. Well, as I see it, there's just one thing you can do. Become a police commissioner. Just one to a family, I think. <laughs> well, at least he bounces cases off you. Yeah, but only when he feels like it. Though this morning, he was telling me that Dr. Campbell called the New York City police from the airport, claiming he was being mugged. But when the police got there, there was no sign of him. And that's it? That's the last time they heard from him? Well, yesterday... Police picked up a vagrant at the airport who was wearing Dr. Campbell's watch. That's why Robert went to New York to question the man. This is sounding very creepy. Yes, you don't have to be a detective to come to that assumption. Hi. <gasps> and that's it? Oh, we've got. So much to go on. If we hadn't gotten that call from the airport, we wouldn't even be looking for him now. So what we know is that Campbell may have been mugged at the airport. At least he called saying that uh, saying that he'd been attacked. Or someone else called claiming to be him. Why would someone do that? I don't know. I'm just trying to cover all the bases. Hmm. 
Fair enough. When our men arrived, he was gone. And none of the other travelers reported seeing or hearing anything unusual? Nobody we talked to. What do you do now? Well, we've got the airport going through all the unmarked and unclaimed baggage. If they open everything they've got, something might turn up. Better. And otherwise, we'd better sit around here and wait for some other clue to manifest itself. Well, here's the one we've got. Campbell's watch. Doesn't tell us much. Hmm. Tells me where to start. Eddie? Yeah. I'd like to have a talk to this uh, <clears throat> vagrant of yours. Maybe I can loosen his memory a little bit. Can't hurt to try. Love him brought right up. Andrews. Bill. Give me a hand for a minute. Some of these boxes are more than this old back and handle without a little help. All right. Got it. That is strange. So far, no one has any idea what happened to Dr. Campbell, if anything did happen. First, the man questions me about Grant Putnam for book he's writing, and then poof, he disappears. In all the time that you spent with him, did he mention any friends or, or business associates that he might be visiting in New York City? No, not that I can remember. Grant, my Grant, talked to him for a while, and maybe he remembers a name or two if it was dropped. I don't know, I'll ask him. I may ask him myself. You know, actually, he's the one you should be asking. Grown partner. Mm -hmm. He could be very helpful. After all, he's one of Dr. Campbell's patients. Uh, Robert's already spoken to him. And he didn't know anything? He's as mystified as the rest of us. Well, then, I really don't know where to start. Neither does Robert. <clears throat> all right, Eddie. Now, we've danced this number long enough. I want some answers, and I want them now. Then you got the wrong man, Commissioner. I don't know nothing. Where did you get the watch? Damn, I know. Then who should I ask? <laughs> Somebody else. I see you just woke up and there it was in your hand. Of course not. It was in my pocket. What did you do to Dr. Campbell? Nothing. I told you I don't know no doctor. I didn't take his watch or anybody else's. Then who gave it to you? Nobody. Nobody I saw, anyhow. Christmas was a couple of months ago, Eddie. You trying to tell me that Santa was a bit late in getting to you? Maybe. I don't know. You stole the watch from Dr. Campbell, man. No! Don't tell me that. You found it? What I'm telling you is it was just there. What were you doing in the airport in the first place? I came in to get warm. They don't let us book lovers use the libraries no more. I see. And what happened while you were there? I had me a shooter. A drink? A couple, as a matter of fact. I fell asleep, woke up, reached in my pocket for a butt. <laughs> Nothing like a smoke after those shut eye. I couldn't believe my eyes. There was this watch, shining bright as day. What I can't believe is your story. Oh, it's the Cosmo Commissioner. I swear it. May I? Go ahead. I'm not getting anywhere. What? <laughs> what are you so nervous about? You guys dragged me down here, you threw all these questions at me. Then you want to know why I ain't having a good time? You selling tickets to the policeman's ball or what? All right, let's just cut the outrage citizen routine, okay, Eddie? We both know you're a snatch artist, or at least you used to be. Used to be is right. These days, my hands shake so bad I couldn't pick a statue's pocket. What about a doctor's? Oh, you've been watching too much TV. How am I going to get some doc's watch off him? You tell me. Oh, if I knew that, I'd be a rich man. The airport's on the phone. Thanks. It's all yours. Detective James, what have you got for me? Maybe you're not the pickpocket you used to be. But I'll bet if you thought you could get a watch away from somebody who wouldn't resist, you wouldn't hesitate now, would you? Hmm? You're saying what? I'm asking. I didn't... Hit! No doctor! Then who did? How? How should I know? Dr. Campbell called us from the airport to say he was being mugged. Then there must have been amateurs. Bros roll a man he don't walk away to make no phone call. Is that what happened then? You went for the watch while your buddy beat him up? Oh, you cops have got some imagination. 
Who was your accomplice? Look at me, Commissioner. Would you want me for a partner? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how everybody else feels, too. Hang on, hang on. Get him out of here. Come on. What is it? They found Campbell's bags in the unclaimed luggage section at the airport. You want to talk to them? Indeed, I do. Yeah, this is uh, Scorpio here, Police Commissioner Poor Charles. What did you find? Campbell's luggage. Well, how do you know it's his? Did you find any papers inside? No, just clothes. But his, uh, his name was on the shaving kit. Okay. Now, you're absolutely sure that there wasn't any kind of manuscript in Dr. Campbell's luggage? Positive. We double-checked everything. The shaving kit. Is it made of leather? That's right. All right, dust it. Everything inside and out for prints. You got it. And get back to us as soon as you know anything, will you? Right. Goodbye. Bye. What do you make of it? I don't know. The strange thing is they found no notes or papers in Campbell's luggage. Strange about that. Not all doctors, right? This one does. I did. He was writing a book. Here? Yeah, that's why he came to the country in the first place. Now, he had to be carrying some sort of papers of some kind. Maybe he had a briefcase. Which has very conveniently disappeared. Or was taken. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Your old pal Lady could have grabbed Campbell's watch while his buddy snitched the briefcase. So you think Eddie did have an accomplice? At this point, I'm not going to discount anything. One part of his story I almost bought was where he said he was alone. But you think he, you think he did put a move on Campbell? I don't know what to think. I'll tell you what I think. Confusing as all this is, one thing seems more and more clear. I hate to admit it, but uh, I think the missing Dr. Campbell may very well have met with an accident. <laughs> We're looking for a briefcase or anything else that Dr. Campbell may have been carrying. Scour the area. I want every inch of garbage dumped by the airport in the last week to be searched. Oh, and uh, if we get any more complaints about Eddie, find out what you can about the caller. See if you can get them to come in here. One of them may have seen something that may give us a clue. Is that it? Just about. Listen, while you're out there searching the airport, Check out any other vagrants you may come across. If their stories don't sound right, then drag them in. The reason for that is that uh, we have a feeling that Eddie may have been working with an accomplice. Questions? Then get to work. Hard part starts now, sitting and waiting. Well, I'm going to give my wife a call to say that I'll be staying overnight. I can give you a call if anything comes up. No, I want to stick around for this one. I want to know about those prints they find in Campbell's luggage. He thinks that could be the clue that breaks this case wide open. Hi, Holly. Uh, oh, good. My wife is still here. She sure is. Thank you. Well, it's about time. Hello, darling. I, uh, I'm sorry. I got held up. Ah, oh, you look freezing. I'll get you something hot to drink. Terrific. It's winter out there. Thank you, Holly. Yes. Wonderful. Mm. You know, Robert says there's still no word from Campbell. No one's seen him for days, not since he left for New York City. Well, I didn't even realize that he'd left. Has anybody spoken with Grant Putnam? You know, Campbell is doing a book that's based in part on Putnam's case. Robert spoke to him, and he hasn't heard from him either. Maybe he flew back to England. Well, the police are looking for him in New York. As a matter of fact, I meant to ask you, do you remember... Campbell mentioning any friends or associates who live in New York City? Maybe he's going to visit one of them. No, I'm afraid not. I only talked to the doctor once, and that was all about Putnam. Chicken, perfect fried chicken, not a chance. Chicken cacciatore, Louise's favorite. Barbecue chicken, maybe. 
Chicken. Chicken with dumplings. Okay. Uh, three pounds of chicken. Uh, 2.91. Close enough. And butter. A little wine. For the cook. Uh, vegetables. What have I got here? Hello? Hi, love. Oh, Robert, where are you? I'm still in New York. Is there anything wrong? No, but I will have to stay here tonight. Oh, I was afraid of that. Yeah, well, I'm sorry too, but something has come up. Well, at least I can stop worrying about what to make for dinner. I would have given you more notice, but, well, I've been pretty busy since I arrived. What's the new development? Campbell's luggage has turned up, and we've got his watch and his bags, but not the man himself. You don't sound very optimistic that you'll find him. I'm not. And I'm beginning to think that if we do, it'll be too late. Morning. Welcome home. I came straight from the airport to here. Good. You must have caught the first shuttle out of New York City. Well, there wasn't too much point in hanging around. I achieved all I could. Little as it was. Didn't go well? I wouldn't have come back to Port Charles so soon if it had. But tell me, did you find out anything at all about Dr. Campbell's disappearance? This is definitely better. After chasing all over New York City in sub-zero temperature, walking through a drafty airport, and sitting in an equally miserable police station, sipping lukewarm coffee, I can appreciate this. I'm glad. Remember, warm is better than cold. Write that down and remember it for the future. Would you hurry up and eat your toast, please? I'm dying to find out about this Campbell case. Not much to tell, really. Campbell never did reclaim his luggage. From the airport. Did you find anything inside that you could use? Shaving kit, which we've dusted for Prince. What about his clothes? Well, can't lift Prince off clothes, love. No, I know. Uh, and the kit? It was clean. Not one single print on it. But isn't that unusual? Mm, not necessarily. What about the vagrant? Useless. Knew nothing at all about Campbell. And you believed him? Until I get proof to the contrary, I'll have to. Oh. And they no other clothes in the suitcase? No. No notes. No record of any of his interviews. Zip. That's strange for someone who's working on a book. Think so, wouldn't you? Too bad you couldn't find who it was he was going to visit in New York. I'm not sure it would have really made much difference. Why'd you say that? I don't think he got to see him. So you're right back to where you started. Yeah, pretty much. You know, I, s I still can't understand why there were no notes in his luggage. No records, no books, nothing. Maybe, maybe he used a tape recorder for his interviews. If he did, wouldn't he kept it with him whilst he was on the plane? That'd be my guess. Oh, I know, this is all very strange. And frustrating. My trip to New York was a virtual waste of time and Campbell is still missing. While we're on the subject of missing persons, you know, we haven't seen Brian and Claudia in ages. We'll call them up and when we'll get together. We are. Tonight. Bit quick, wasn't it? I invited them over for early drinks and dinner. And what would have happened if I couldn't have got back from New York in time? Well, then I would have entertained them on my own, but this is much nicer. You don't mind, do you? No, not at all. Give me a chance to talk to Brian about what's going on in the local government. What with playing detective of late, I haven't had much time to play commissioner. And you've been loving every minute of it. I've got to admit, I like getting out in the field. It keeps me sharp. I wouldn't mind that opportunity myself, you know. One crime fighter in the household is enough, my dear. 
You didn't say that when I busted the dance school bunch. You didn't give me a chance to say that. It all happened so quick. Well, anyway, that's history. And so's your crime-fighting career. We'll see. I don't know whether I like the sound of that. Anyway, about dinner tonight, what time should I invite Brian and Claudia? Oh, doesn't matter, really. Uh, I... Hey, listen. Call up Grant and Celia, and uh, we'll see if we can make a night of it. What a good idea. Uh, Brian and Grant are friends, and I know since Grant's been working on construction, they haven't had a chance to see each other much. I'll go and call Celia. I could certainly use a nice relaxing evening with some friends, get my mind off this Campbell business. You still have no idea of his whereabouts? This guy has literally vanished into thin air, and I have no idea where to start looking. Hello, Paul Kudeme. Hi, Jimmy Lee. It's Holly. Hi, Holly. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Do you think you could get a me message to Grant for me, could you? Well, I can practically guarantee it. As a matter of fact, you can tell him yourself if you like. Oh, he's nearby? Mm-hmm. At arm's length. Hold on a second. Holly Scorpio. Hi, Holly. Grant, did I catch you at a bad time? No, oh, you caught me at a good time. As a matter of fact, I just got a promotion. Well, congratulations. Yeah, Do you feel like celebrating this evening? Uh, what did you have in mind? Well, Robert and I would like to have you and Celia over for drinks and dinner tonight. That sounds good. We really don't get to see enough of each other now. But that's exactly what we thought. I tried to catch Celia at the gatehouse, but there was no reply. Well, I'll tell you what. I will accept for both of us. We didn't have any plans, and I'm sure it's going to be fine with her. Well, that's great. We've invited Brian and Claudia, too. Oh, wonderful. I haven't seen Brian in quite a while. Well, you can remedy that tonight. I intend to do so. <laughs> we will see you later. Okay, bye. Thank Celia you. and Grant should be here soon. Oh, uh -huh. how's Grant doing? Uh, fine, as far as I know. We don't get to see him and Celia nearly as much as we'd like to. Then. Well, neither do we. I'm looking forward to catching up with him tonight. Ah, speaking of catching up, what's been going on in the local government of late? You know, I was about to ask you the same thing. Well, what with all my police work, I guess I haven't put in too many appearances in City Hall. What's your excuse? Well, for every hour that I spend in the office, I spend another ten in the streets. Oh, and he loves it. Anything <laughs> to avoid paperwork. I know the feeling. <laughs> Thank goodness we've got a strong mayor to cover for us. Lee really has taken charge, hasn't he? I think he's doing a great job. I think he's made the transition from private lawyer to public mayor very smoothly. Yes, it can't be easy doing something like that. I believe... Uh, Grant's doing quite well, though. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I was wondering how he would take the construction work. Well, as I understand, he's making quite a go of it. It's got to be hard, of course, with, uh, mm -hmm. with all his background, but uh, he and Celia seem happy. I hope so. If anyone deserves happiness, it's those two. Oh, here, here. Let's have a drink. One ginger ale for this man. <laughs> White wine for me. Please, go ahead and start. I have no idea how long Robert will be. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Um, once again, I'm very sorry that Celia couldn't be with us this evening. We, but we understand. Oh, absolutely. How can you pass up the meeting with Lorena Sharp? Uh-huh. Business before pleasure. Well, Holly, when I accepted for both of us, I had no idea that this meeting was going to arise. In fact, it was a last-minute thing. These things happen. I hope she gets the job. Oh, yes. Now, wouldn't that be wonderful? Mm. Does she think that her chances are pretty good? Well, that's what she said, anyway. It'd be quite a coup if she pulls it off. Well, I've always envied Celia's artistic talent. Oh, so have I. I wish I had some of them. Honey, why don't you look into working at the Avalon, too? Me? Sure. I think you'd be great with the society types. You'd be right in your own element. What would I do? I don't know. There must be some kind of uh, promotional work. How about social director? This is a health club, not a cruise. You'd be surprised how similar they are, dear. Oh, well, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't mind being gainfully employed. <laughs> when would you have the time? I mean, with all the responsibilities of being a commissioner's wife, uh, you still at loose ends? Yes, yeah, a surprise, isn't it? But I've been filling my time pretty well. In fact, I just just made contact with an English club in Port Charles. Uh, hmm. Now, what do they do? Sit around and pine for the old country, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. I think it'll be fun to mix with some of my fellow expatriates. I know exactly what you mean. I do find myself missing the British connection every now and then. Mm. There is something about the country that you were raised in. Things that are very hard to forget. They can just be little things, but somehow they stay with you. Yeah. That's exactly how I feel about England. I'm sorry. Oh, hey. We were beginning to get a bit worried about you. I got a bit tied up on the phone. Mm. Anything important? Yes, it was. Can you share it with us civilians? I think so. Grant, this could be of particular interest to you. 
That was the New York City police on the phone, the airport precinct. They just found Dr. Campbell's overcoat stuffed into a trash bin at the airport. How long had it been there? Hard to say. Garbage hadn't been collected for a couple of days. Still no sign of the doctor himself? Nothing. Mm. How did they know it was Campbell's overcoat? The label inside came from a haberdasher's in Cornwall, England. Cornwall? Where in Cornwall? A village your namesake knew quite well. One called Rockmore. Listen, what happened to that uh, call to Brock? All right, keep trying. Yeah, yeah. Listen, uh, something else. You call the paper and get Jackie Templeton. You tell her that I want her in my office now. You look ready to kill someone. Oh, sorry, love. I, I didn't hear you come in. Am I interrupting something? No, not yet. I was just shopping and I thought I'd pop in and say hello. Uh, look, I, I, I can't take you to lunch, love. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. I'm having lunch with Celia later on at the gatehouse. Mm. Uh, is something annoying you? Well, that's putting it mildly. You read the paper this morning? No, I was in a hurry. I didn't get a chance to read it. Jackie Templin's written this article about Brock claiming that he is the patron saint of Port Charles and out to expose corruption. Oh, and who does he say is corrupt? Rick Weber. Rick Weber? Robert! That's preposterous. Hmm. Well, it's all here in the story. She claims that uh, Rick accepted a bribe from one of Brock's employees. Well, this is, this is ridiculous. You certainly don't believe it, do you? Of course I don't. The point is, though, that this is a criminal offence. I mean, why wasn't this office informed of it? Have you asked? I've been trying to get through to Brock all morning. His line's busy. However, I did call the paper. Jackie Templeton's coming in for a little uh, questioning. Questions that she won't answer. She'll hide behind her usual excuse that she won't reveal her sources. No problem. It's all there in the story. I mean, she quotes Brock all the way through it. Can you go after him? I can try. Look, he was a private citizen, accusing one of these city commissioners of a criminal offence. Add to that the fact that he's aided and abetted by a journalist with rather questionable principles. Damn right I'm going after them. Okay. Well, keep me posted. Thank you. Sorry about that. Well, some story, huh? It's, it's revolting. I don't believe one word of it. Alas, a lot of readers will. Yes, but it, it, it's nonsense. In the first place, Rick Weber isn't that kind of man. And in the second place, what would he want with a bride? I mean, he's not exactly poor. Well, excuse me, love. Yeah. Oh, she is, is she? Uh, listen, give me a minute, will you? Then send her in. Poison Pen Templeton's here. In that case, I'll make a quick exit. But, you know, she won't give you an, a, an inch. Well, in that case, I'm going to have to uh, crack this case in spite of it. You know, you know what really galls me here? I have a lot of real police work to do in this place. I mean, I've got numerous other cases, I've got this Campbell business, and now I have this mess to contend with. I'll talk to you later. Okay. For the record, I am here under protest. Noted. But it seemed a lot easier than stalling you. Hmm, well, easy for both of us. Now, do you care to explain that story in the paper this morning? Robert, what do I have to explain? Brock gave me a good story and I printed it. Did he show you any proof of his allegations? That's privileged information. I want an answer. Now, who is this woman that gave Rick a bribe, allegedly? She is an employee of Brock's. And it makes it I make it perfectly clear in my story. And how do I find her? I have no idea. Well, doesn't that bother you just a little bit that you can't produce the key witness who's the essence of your whole story? She's not my concern. I wrote what Brock claimed and proved. That's the extent of my responsibility. Yeah, well, just hang on to your notes and tapes. A judge may want to have a look at them. And if I refuse? You've heard of contempt of court. Oh, yes, Robert, I know what contempt is very well. It's that familiar feeling I get every time I'm around you. It's also what a judge will cite you with if you don't hand over your notes. 
I'll take my chances. May I go? One more thing. What? Stay in touch. Stay in touch. Don't be shy, Commissioner. Press is always available to you.